I was like, I gotta get a picture of Hank Green because I'm in the same room as Hank Green and he's not on a stage and it's so, oh my god. <laughs> Welcome to the Extra Dimension. This episode is on the topic of NerdCon stories featuring Ian Buck and Savannah Haslow. Find the show notes for this episode of the Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED6. So what does that sentence even mean? Goodness. Nerd con stories. What the heck is that? Um, well, luckily I'm here to explain it, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so it's a, so it, it's a convention um, that happened uh, just last weekend, um, October 9th and 10th of 2015, at, at the Minneapolis Convention Center. Um, and it's all about... So nerd con... Hank Green still doesn't know. By the way, it was put together by Hank Green. Did I mention that? Who the heck is Hank Green? Who the heck is Hank Green? Hank Green is uh, one of one of my you know big celebrity f- fan following crush things. Um, what do we call those? Uh, I don't know. I I basically con- try to consume literally everything that he does these days. Um, and he's like one of only two people that I do that for. Um, because he so he's one of the Vlog Brothers. Um, when did they start doing that? 2007, I believe. Yeah, a long, long time ago. Um, and they started just doing these videos twice a week, um, to, to, just to keep in touch with each other, right? Correct. Um, and, and so, like, Hank uploads a video on Friday, I think, and John uploads a video on Tuesdays, and, and they just kind of go back and forth, um, talking about what's going on in their lives or whatever, and... Uh, and I guess over time they just kind of gathered a following and and started doing other things, you know, more than just than than just talking about their lives. They started doing like explainers for big topics that are going on, you know, that are on their minds. They started doing like charity mm-hmm. um, drives. Um, they've branched out into into a lot of other mediums. Um, I suppose part of part of their following probably came just from the fact that John is an author. Probably yeah, because yes. he was writing books long before they started the Vlog Brothers series. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I mean, you tried to get get me to start watching their stuff way back when I w- went off to college, correct? In two thousand and eleven, and I didn't do that. Well, no, of course not. Until like a a year and a half ago, um, and and then I just kind of yeah dove in head first and and in addition to watching all of their vlog brothers videos i also watch like most of the crash course stuff that you know they they they're not always the hosts of the crash course educational videos but they um you know are the the producers and kind of started the whole thing um you know i've i've been finding out new things about like them over the course of of time like you know turns out hank green does music and yeah. has an actual album out that I can listen to, yes. which is pretty yes. awesome. <laughs> um, and you know, yeah, they recently they started a, a podcast of dubious advice, and it's a comedy podcast where they talk about death a lot. Yeah, and a common theme of the podcast is lamenting the fact that they have a comedy podcast about death. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so so those are the the Vlog Brothers, the Green Brothers. Um, and uh, Hank Green um, decided to put together this thing um, to celebrate storytelling in all kinds of mediums. Um, and so they, they decided to call it uh, NerdCon Stories. And uh, when, he, when he was announcing it on the Vlogbrothers channel, you know, he was, he was slowly giving more information about it. Like, you know, it's going to be, um, it, it, you know, he, he talked about what the subject was going to be. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm really interested. This is really cool. I love stories. Um, and, and, you know, we've been trying to um, kind of put together a, a role-playing game based, story-based podcast here on the Nexus um, for a while. We'll see when we have time for that, right? Right. Um, but yeah, so like storytelling, I was like, yes, I, I want to go to this. And then he was like, it's going to be in Minneapolis. And I was like, that's my hometown. This is perfect. I can just, you know, like st- if I'm not living uh, in the cities come fall. Uh, well, I actually I didn't know when it was yet because um, I was just like, that's my hometown. I'll, I'll just be able to stay at home and, and you know, go over for the convention and not have to worry about a hotel or anything. And then he announced when it was October 9th and 10th. And I was like, that's my birthday. I have to go to that now. Like, there's no excuse not to. Um, and then he mentioned that the tickets were like $100. And I was like, 
paused for like one and a half seconds. I was like, worth it. I'm going to it. <laughs> um, and I tried to convince Ian Decker to go with me, but you don't he, know. Did, he didn't go. Oh, well. Um, and actually, luckily, I, I kind of assumed that it was going to be like um, the evening of, of Friday the 9th. Uh, and then all day the 10th, but it was all day both days. So I didn't realize that until approximately two weeks before the convention. And luckily, that's about how much time you're supposed to give when requesting a day off at, at Harding High School. Um, so I was able to go to both days and, yeah. and not miss out on anything. Yay. Um, so let's see, what else What else about uh, the convention in general? Um, this is its first year, so obviously it, it was kind of small. Um, they, I think they had something like 3000 tickets and they didn't even sell out of all of them. Are they intending um, to do this here multiple years or are they touring the show or I the con? I think, I think they're going to do it here again next year. I hope it would, yes. be, it would be really cool to go again. Um, but yeah, I don't know for sure because like, uh, a lot of the stuff that they were talking about was just, well, we're we're putting this thing together and we don't know exactly what what's going to become of it we you know it might be you know the some things that we think are going to be awesome might not be so awesome some things that you know we just kind of were like eh let's throw that in might become like the big thing from from nerdcon stories um so i mean we'll see what they what they do with it next year um i quite enjoyed most of the most of the like planned events that they had mm-hmm. um so i hope that they kind of keep it similar um, oh, one thing, Hank Green was, you know, asking everybody to kind of give suggestions for next year to make it better. I've got one really easy one. Yeah. Make the name tags that they hand out to the attendees double-sided because there were so many times when I sat down next to somebody, um, and you know, we're from like different towns and everything. And, you know, you wanted to get to know them and you look down and their name tag is flipped around and you can't see their name. And it's like, well, hi, I'm Ian. What's your name? <laughs> we shouldn't have, we should have been able to just skip this part of the conversation, but there it is. I think it's good practice to introduce yourself whether right. you're wearing a name tag or not. Right, but I mean it's also, you know, the the security guards when they when everybody's filing into the giant atrium are looking for your name tag, yeah. right? And sometimes it's like, "Oh, is that a real one?" or you know. Um but yeah, it, it wasn't a huge issue, but it's like that that would be a really easy thing to do next year. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. Um, another another thing that I mean, I've never been to a convention before, but from what I understand, um, this was different in that it didn't attract like a lot of the huge, rabid fan base of cosplayers and, you know, people who are just there to, for the signings and stuff um, because it was all it was all focused on storytelling. So it attracted a lot of like aspiring creators. Um, so there were a lot of writers there. There were some vloggers. Um, there were, I mean, I'm sure that there were other podcasters there as well. Um, actually I got to experience watching vloggers recording themselves <laughs> in person. There were a couple of people sitting right behind me as we were waiting for like the morning main stage event to happen on Saturday. Um, and they were, you know, they were from like different channels that, you know, they do crossovers every once in a while. So they were just like, hey, so-and-so's viewers, like we're here together at NerdCon Stories. And they started talking about what they thought of the first day and everything. And I was like, I just looked back at them. and I'm like, this is this is a really surreal experience for me watching this happen because I've only ever watched that through the lens of a computer screen. Um, yeah, is I mean, it is what it is. And it, it actually kind of made me wish that I had like a small portable, nice, um, microphone to use, you know, mm-hmm. to just record like in between events, sit down at a table and be like, well, you know, here I am at NerdCon Stories and then put all those together in the end, um, to make this sort of thing. Maybe I'll do that next year. Maybe I'll bring a microphone good idea. and a laptop and yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about what the events actually were that they had that were like planned. Um, so each day they had two main stage events, one right, right away in the morning and then one, um, in the afternoon. Um, and at each one of those, they had a couple of like why stories matter presentations. Um, and they, those tended to be like the more famous people of, of their featured guests were presenting those ones. Um, and they, you know, some some of them were like really funny. Some of them were, you know, a little bit more emotional. Um, and and actually, that one of my favorite moments of the weekend was when John Green came out to do 
his Why Stories Matter speech. And he gets out onto the stage and immediately goes, oh, and turns around and zips up his fly. And I managed to get a perfect <laughs> shot of him zipping up his fly on stage. Um, and then he proceeded to like tell a story about how uh, th- that had happened to him in like 2008, where he gave a whole speech to a group of like junior hires without realizing that his fly was down. <laughs> and uh, and, you know, when he asked for questions at the end, like everybody's hands shot up. And uh, the first person, you know, their question was, did you realize that your fly was down? And, you know, and I think that it, it, like the implication was that that was everybody's question. Um, but yeah, so now so now every time he goes onto a stage, he uh, checks first. And this was apparently the first time since that day in 2008 when it was actually down. Um, so apparently it's still important to check because <laughs> um, you never know what's going to happen. Um, they also had some like hilarious games on stage, um, like who said that where mm-hmm. they gave the three, um, so all of these, all of these games were just like featured guests running a game for other featured guests and the rest of us watch. Okay. Right. Um, so they didn't get like people from the audience up there. Um, but yeah, so like who said that was uh, a game where, um, they, they had, like these cutouts of a person's face, double-sided. One side had one person, the other side had a different person's face mm-hmm. printed on them. And they had to use those to vote on like who this particular quote was likely to, to have been by. Um, so the first, the first few were like, uh, was it Kanye West or Donald Trump? You know, and they were just like the dumbest things you've ever heard. And it was really a difficult game. I, you know, when I was <laughs> guessing... Myself, I was I got most of them wrong. Um, it turns out it's hard to tell the difference between them. Um, oh, they also had a game of uh, Celebrity Artemis, which was really cool. So, do you know what Artemis is? I do not know. Um, so it's a it's a local co op video game um, where you you have to have five separate computers um, all hooked up on a local area network, and each person at each of their different computers has a different console on it. Um, because together they make the bridge crew of a spaceship. Um, so one person is going to be the helm, one person's the communications, um, one person's engineering, and the last person is weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the fifth person, uh, is the captain. Um, so every, all of those, everybody except for the captain has an actual console that they interact with. Um, and then the captain just has like an outdoor view of, of the, uh, of the ship. Um, and usually you want to project that up on a, up on a projector so that everybody can see that. Um, and so the, it's a game of like trying to communicate with everybody and cooperate. Um, and since it seemed like the people that they had playing it on stage had never played it before, it involved a lot of, how do I turn? Helm, figure out how to turn. And you know, nobody's helping him, but it's just like, go do the thing, you know? (laughs) redirect shields i um which way (laughs) like a bit bigger better version of space team kind of yeah yeah um yeah that that doesn't involve a lot of just gibberish you know yeah um it it actually has plausible still a lot of screaming though yeah yeah i mean when you have a more well-oiled team you know there's a lot less screaming and and it'll be kind of more organized right Mm -hmm. um but they they did manage to uh, destroy the first enemy that they encountered, and then and then they found a space station to dock at and repair. Um, and that was yeah. So they they played for like I don't know fifteen minutes um, in front of all of us, and um, and then and then that was it. Yep. Um, and then oh man, I think one of my favorite games that they played was definitely What's in My Mouth. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so that one was. Uh, they had um, uh, a couple of the the cast from uh, Welcome to Night Vale actually um, blindfolded, and then they had the they they just stuck random things in their mouth. So like um, a plastic spider with spinach puree, Ugh. or uh, a Lego minifigure covered in um, cocktail sauce, and they had to f- guess what was yeah what was in their mouth. Um, I don't think I would have done very well at all because I don't know foods. You don't have any sort of taste. That too. Yeah. But like literally at the a- afterwards, I turned to somebody and I was like, what's a puree? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
it's a it's a vegetable that's been cut up really fine or whatever. I don't. Know. It's it's like a vegetable blended. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we call it that? Blended vegetable. Yeah. Because puree is fancy. It is. It sounds kind of French, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And that's what you want in cooking. True. Yes. We want chefs, not cooks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Oh, another. So another. Uh, thing that they had at the main stage event was uh called juvenilia which was oh man it was wonderful it, they had some authors go up there and read terrible poetry that they had written as teenagers yes. <laughs> it oh. was hilarious um and by far my favorite of those um was a poem about bagpipes <laughs> that was really strangely erotic and it was so funny that the sign language interpreter just started cracking up and, he, you know, he, he was having trouble, like, continuing because he was laughing so hard. And so they had, you know, the, the actual author who was reading it aloud, you know, started having, like, these <laughs> interactions with the, uh, the, with, the, with the interpreter uh, because they were both just, you know, having a great time and, and cracking up about this whole mm-hmm. thing. It was hilarious. Um, yeah, the... I think that was probably the second funniest moment uh, of the entire weekend. And I'll tell you what the funniest moment was um, later once we get on. Because I've got this whole... I, I've got this whole scary looking list um, with multiple uh, layers of tabbing and, and everything. I'm, I need to be meticulous. Otherwise, I miss things. Yeah, I know. And it's, Im- I know. It, it's important to me that I get to talk about everything. Because there was so much good stuff in the weekend. I'll forget it. Um Oh yeah. Then um then they also had a rapid fire Q&A featuring a bunch of authors. So they just like lined them all up and then asked like a you know a quick yes or no question, you know, or or mm-hmm. a very short answer question. Um and each person, you know, went and just answered it. Um and a lot of it, you know, people just kind of answered legitimately. Um one person was dressed up as a giant squid on stage. Uh, so he was just in like this red spandex suit with tentacles uh, attached to it and like a big giant squid head on top. Um, and he answered all of the questions like this. And it turns out that he has a whole podcast where he records as this character of the giant squid dravaganza. And, and yeah, so he, he answered all of the questions in character and everything. Um, and it, it made it so, so much better. Um, and I've been, I've, I've started listening to some of the, uh, Cephala podcast episodes and they are hilarious. And there's not too many of them because it just started in April. Um, and they're only like 17 minutes long. So go listen to it. Is it weekly or monthly? It was supposed to be bi weekly. Mm hmm. But there was like this huge gap where, you know, for like a month or two where he just it hadn't come out with anything new. Yeah. Um, so there 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 aren't very many. There's like 17 episodes or something okay. like that. Um, yeah, it shouldn't take too long for me to catch up on that. Um, unlike, you know, the thrilling adventure hour, which has been going consistently weekly, I think, f- since uh, 2009 or something. Um, yeah. That one's taking a while, but I don't mind because I just listen to it while I'm walking to and from work. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. They also had some mock debates um, where and it, it was, you know, all very, very structured mock debates um, so that, you know, each team had like a minute for their opening statements and then and then a minute for rebuttals and then a minute to prepare their final statements and then two minutes for their final statements. Except that they were debating like ridiculous questions, like do you in the morning do you put a, them on sock sock shoo shoo or sock shoo sock shoo? Eh? <laughs> I, I know, right? Who does who does the latter? Oh, nobody. I mean, the the team that got assigned that position was doomed from the start. Yeah. Uh, but you know, they made the best of it. Uh, in and uh, had some like really like getting the crowd into it, you know, kind of, you know, making all of these different types of logical appeal, emotional appeal, you know, tradition appeal. Uh, they were doing like a really, really good job. At, at one point, um, um, Kevin R. Free, who voices Kevin in Welcome to Night Vale, um, he was jumping up and down on the stage, like, you know, yelling, when, when I say sock, you say shoe, sock, shoe, sock, shoe. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. Um, 
but yeah, I mean the other team won because sock sock shoe shoe is like the clear clear yeah. winner. Um but in terms of yeah, in terms of like which one made a better argument, I think, you know, they may have done a little bit better, I think. Mm-hmm. Um but I mean, oh my gosh, Dessa Dessa was there. She was on the other team. She has amazing stage presence. You know, she's all over the place and like very, you know, when she's, when she's up there doing stuff, you have to pay attention to her Mm -hmm. because you, you just can't not. She's a, she's a really good performer. Um, let's just leave it at that. Um, (laughs) what? What? Huh? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, they also had, uh, they also had, a, a single uh, round of Mad Libs where, yeah, just one person was up at the podium yelling out, like, I need an adjective. And then people in the crowd were just yelling adjectives at her, um, and, you know. And, and so if you were anywhere but, like, the first two rows, you had no chance of, of your words getting in. Like, I heard a guy way at the back just yelling at the top of his lungs, octopus, at every single noun. It didn't make it in. Aww. She couldn't hear octopus, um, which was sad. Uh, but we did we did come away with the phrase "Don't forget to be pretentious" from that, um, which is the only thing that I remember from that Mad Libs. So if I ever say that, you'll mm-hmm. know where it's from. Um, oh man, they also did a puppet adventure, which is really really cool um, because it was it was a whole puppet show just using common household ob- items. Uh, so like the, you know, the main character was just kind of like a table, like, like a, mm, not a tablecloth, but you know, like a small kind of checkered cloth. Napkin? Mm, maybe it was, it was longer though. Cause it like, table it, runner? it ra- wrapped around her hand and then, you know, was long enough to go down her forearm. And then she was holding a pair of glasses in her fist and that was like a character. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, somebody else w- had like a pair of shoes and was being the feet for that character. Um, and, and they, you know. We're doing this whole story. Uh, it turned out to be kind of like a narrator versus characters sort of thing. Um, so like John Scalzi, who is the part of the the narrator, he kept trying to throw random things at them like avalanche. And then, you know, somebody would dump a bunch of potatoes on the table um, and, and knock over the characters and stuff. Um, and one of those potatoes became another in-joke from the convention because um, I think... Mm, Maureen Johnson tried to like claim one of the potatoes and wrote her name on it, but then Hank Green stole it, or maybe Paul Paul from Paul and Storm stole it and then gave it to Hank Green or something. But Hank Green ended up going home with it, and so there was this whole thing on Twitter going back and forth of like, "Give me back my potato! I'm going to climb in your window and find it," you know, and stuff like that. Um, and apparently, they're going to try and have it travel the world so sending the potato to different people or something good luck i know right it's gonna rot real soon yeah, um or start potato. sprouting yeah it sprouts yeah that's Before what potato. it rots usually mm-hmm. um and then and then to close off uh the afternoon main stage events they had musical uh um shows pr- performances things um the first day was harry and the potters um who are just a couple of brothers um, who have made a lot of mute songs about Harry Potter. And, uh, and then the second day was Paul and Storm, who I think I've become like a, a diehard fan of theirs all of a sudden. And I need to go and find all of their things and listen to all of it. Um, cause they're a, a musical comedy duo in, in their own words that seem to do a lot of this, like, same subjects that I'm, very interested in Mm -hmm. um like two out of the three songs that they sang were about game of thrones um and and one of those two was strangely seemed to be a parody of a parody because it was set to the tune of american pie and it started with the words a long long time ago which is exactly how weird al's the saga begins starts right but it was all about the crazy ways that characters die in a game of thrones Mm -hmm. which was i mean it was a great song and i think i managed to pay little enough attention that i didn't really absorb the uh spoilers that were in there because i'm only done with like the first three books so there were a few of those that i definitely didn't recognize but i i think i've managed to just wipe those from my memory so it's okay um 
Yeah, he did. At the end of the song, he was like, uh, retroactively, a spoiler alert. <laughs> like, Gee, thanks. Um, yeah. So, any questions about the main stage events? I want to go. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the main the main stage events were pretty darn great. Um, and then and then of course in between those they had um, panels mm-hmm. um, planned, usually like three at a time kind of thing. So you had to pick which one of those you wanted to go That's to. That's such a terrible thing to I have to do. I know, I know, especially since, um, for example, the Nerd Fighter Q and A uh, was at the same time as hearing is believing stories you consume with your ears which i couldn't skip out on i mean how am i supposed to skip out on the the medium that i am the most interested in and that i actually make things in correct right you know um so unfortunately i had to not go and see hank and john answer questions but that's okay because i hear them answer questions all the time on their own podcast um so yeah let's just talk about the panels um so the the like I said, hearing is believing is the one that I really, really wanted to go to. So that's the one that I was furiously taking notes during on my phone because um, they didn't really seem to have free Wi-Fi there. I mean, I looked at the networks, but uh, there weren't any that seemed to be associated with the Minneapolis Convention Center. Mm-hmm. There was one that was just all caps, free Internet. And I looked at that and went, no, I would. I, I don't trust it. I would have done it. Yeah. Well, I also didn't have to worry too much about just using my phone, you know, Mm -hmm. because like I have unlimited data, so whatever. Um, But yeah, so so there I am in the middle of this of this panel, just like typing as fast as I can on my phone, um, which isn't ideal, but it worked out okay. Um, So I wrote down a bunch of stuff like. Um, you know, they were, they were talking about what, what are stories, you know, what, what has to go into a story to make it into a story. Um, so, you know, it has to be like, in terms of podcasting, if you're sh- trying to share a story with somebody, it has to be something that you find important enough to actually push out there to the public. Right. Um, so I guess this would be an example of one of those things. I think that nerd con stories is important enough to just bleh, push on other people. Right. Um, just like your current career. Exactly. Yes. I, I teach students about computers because I've always tried to shove my enthusiasm for technology down other people's throats and now I get paid to do it. Yes. Um, um, you know, they talked about other things like stories have to have growth and change and beginning, middle of end and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then they then they got into some like real specifics about stuff that you can do in an audio format. So like um, they're they're coolest piece of advice i think was uh try doing something that you can't do live on stage um you know because so often you you have these shows that are just uh recordings of a live stage event Mm -hmm. and then just get put out there in podcast form um but but you know far more interesting are the ones where they're they're using the medium in a way that you wouldn't be able to do on a live stage um so things like, uh, you know, interviews wouldn't really work on a live stage. Um, using unique sound design, you know, because you can go back in in post-production and um, put in sound effects and stuff that maybe, you know, like it's not too hard to put in sound effects during a main, like a live stage event, but you might mess them up mm-hmm. right on, you know, the first time around. Um, so you can really tweak them and get it good. Um when you're doing a podcast, you know, you don't have to like repeat facts very often because you can just kind of assume that your listeners have been listening from the beginning of the episode. I um, mean, you don't have to worry about like, if you're just tuning in, this is where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought of like every single history channel show that I've ever watched where it seems like a good two thirds of the actual episode is recapping what happened oh, earlier yeah. in the episode. Oh, yeah. Hate that. Awful, awful stuff. Um, and and uh, and then um, talking about like kind of stylistically, you know, how do you how do you when you're talking about things like how do you kind of make it make it flow well and do and, you know, kind of sound better. Um, and one of the good pieces of advice that, that I got was imagine who you're trying to explain this thing to. Um, and just like, think of them as like riding shotgun with you, um, as you're doing the thing, which is why I hate record, trying to record podcasts by myself. Um, having another person to bounce stuff off of is a huge help. 
Um, Even though I don't talk much. Well, yeah, but you're still there. Yeah, Especially, a physical presence to listen. Yes, to listen to and and you know even the occasional bounce back is important because then um you know you, I'll, you might think of something that I don't think of or you know like um you know yeah if if I if I need to get somebody else's uh, you know like viewpoint on something um you know mm-hmm. that kind of thing yeah um and then. Uh, <laughs> I loved this one. Good podcasts. This is what they do. They get to the point. It shouldn't just be a couple of white guys shooting the breeze. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Sounds like eight <laughs> bit, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I, yeah, I, I was aware. I think even at the time that our show wasn't, re- you know, wouldn't wouldn't ever be good to have for a what broad audience. You know, mm-hmm. it was good for people who knew Ian and I in real life. And we're interested in, like, not just listening to the video game news that we wanted to talk about, but also hearing about, like, oh, what did I do this week? Um, and so, obviously, now that now that we're done with that show, that's something to avoid in future shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but for that one, I think it's that's what it needed to be, because it was the show was also just an excuse for Ian and I to talk every week. Yeah. Um, but the Vlogbrothers made it into a, you know into a larger thing yeah. where, where it just started off as them talking to each other. Mm, yeah. They they brought in they brought a new format to the game though. Mhm. Um and they then broadened their media presence. And now they've turned it into back into a podcast which is just them talking about random stuff. Right. Yeah. Which they have to have that kind of fan base to do. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're also just for the podcast. They're also doing um, taking questions from people on you know to yeah. to do advice. So it's not just like just the two of them talking about whatever they want to talk about. It's them trying you know taking their experiences and applying them to the questions mm-hmm. that people are are bringing to them. Um, I think it's also probably a little bit different since they were doing uh, video than a podcast because yeah. like a lot of successful and semi-successful youtube channels are personality based you know yeah. um you have to make a commitment to watch a youtube video most of the time you can't well just... and you don't have to make a commitment to watch a podcast or listen to a podcast <laughs> no you don't because oftentimes i find myself doing i'll throw on a podcast and then start doing something else ah, and i see what you my mean. focus uh, gets completely taken up by something else, and then I tune back in the podcast. I'm like, "What's going on? What's going what? on? Don't know any of these references they're making anymore." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good point. Like whenever I have a conversation in the middle of Welcome to Nightville because the kids are over. <laughs> Yikes! That's yeah. That's why I, most of the times when I listen to podcasts, I try to do it in a context where I know I'll be able to give it my full attention. Mm-hmm. Um, so like if I am eating breakfast by myself if i'm in transit by myself yeah. you know um or best case scenario if i have one other person there with me who is also interested in that specific podcast um and there's yeah there's only one case where i i think i willingly you know was like hey dad we're in a car driving do you want to listen to a podcast that I have been listening to? And so I, you know, we listened to an episode of uh, the thrilling adventure hour together, Mm -hmm. which was cool because it was, you know, it was a, a story, you know, it's, it was, it's shape, it's formed like an old time radio drama, which, um, you know, is, is like, it draws you in enough, um, and has, you know, enough appeal for, you know, it's not like I was making my dad listen to a, a, a podcast about Google, right. You know, that would have been a bad idea. Correct. Um, um, oh, and that's another thing that actually um, was kind of brought up uh, by a person in the audience was, how do I share podcasts with other people? You know, because like, and, and not from like a technical stance, but like, how do I just get other people interested in the podcasts that I'm listening to? Mm-hmm. You know? Because um, like you said, it is a hard thing to listen to a podcast with somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a very solo, um, insular like experience. Um and from and, and then if even if you come at it from the technical perspective as well, like um the best you can do is share a link to that website with 
with somebody else. Shout into the void and hope it clicks the link. Yeah. And and it doesn't have the advantage of like most YouTube videos will be embedded mm-hmm. when you paste it into, you know, even Twitter will will Im- embed like a preview of the um, video um, in, in the mobile app. And uh, no, like that doesn't happen for podcasts because mm-hmm. they're not always just one standard format, you know, um, the they're it's an MP3 file embedded in the in the Web page. Um, yeah. which for some reason, uh, you know, apparently can't be, uh, displayed in the Facebook feed. Should I think be it's, to. I think it's more that they don't care enough to they make don't. it do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm, that's why I'm salty about it. It yeah. would be so easy, but nobody cares. <sighs> also, you should have a good microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which oh, is a God. great, yes. great. Yeah. Hey, there was um there was a podcast on my community forums, and I had to stop listening to it about five minutes in because I couldn't stand the microphone quality, mm-hmm. and it's really sad to me because I really like those people, but I can't deal with it. Yeah, and it's, I mean, yeah, it's not too hard to get a good microphone, you know, like ten dollars, twenty dollars. You you can get a good. Don't sounding use your microphone. laptop microphone. No, please, please, please plug something else in Ugh. external. Um, it'll almost guaranteed to be better. And don't hit it while you're talking. Yeah. Maybe have a pop filter. Those are nice. Those are nice. Um, you're getting more spendy though. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I, 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 it, it adds up real quick because like, um, I just got a microphone for at home so that, you know, maybe if, if I want to experiment with stuff, um, putting, throwing together some, some recordings or whatever, I don't have to come over here to the studio to do it. Um, but of course the microphone only comes with like this tiny little tripod and the desk is really far down there and I'm six foot three. And so I would have to slouch and then look up at my screen if I wanted to have it sitting on the desk in front of me. So like a microphone boom is going to be essential yeah but that yeah so the the cost multiplies quite quickly um can you mount it on your camera tripod oh i don't you right uh yeah i don't have that yet but that's coming in the mail soon because i had a birthday um you did have a birthday might be able to do that might yeah. i i uh Worth we'll have shot. to see yeah Worth we'll have shot. to see um thanks for thinking of that i've, I've been kind of freaking out about about that over the last couple of days. Just chill. It's important. <laughs> I know it's important, but you got chill. Um, oh, another another really good tip um, was that, especially, so for, for sound effects, especially if you're doing like a an audio drama type thing, um, freesound.org was a website that, that they mentioned um, that has uh, Creative Commons licensed mm. uh, sound effects. So the other day I was looking around on there and um, they have laser sound effects, so it's good enough for me. <laughs> That's all you need in life. Pew, pew. Um, Why don't you just make the laser sound effects? Yeah. No, we should have Stella do the laser sound yes. effects. Stella should do all our sound effects. Just give her a prompt and see what she comes mm-hmm. back with. <laughs> that would make for a fantastic podcast. Um, the- we should get Stella involved. We should. We should. I mean, really, we can get everybody involved yeah. because everybody... You don't have to have, uh, you know, like huge stage presence. You don't have to be um, confident in front of a camera, you know. I mean, I, I know that there are a lot of people who listen to a, the podcast with their own voice for the first time and go, ugh, that's what I sound like. Ugh, I do that every time. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, that's um, sound effects. Yeah, good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um the the one one of the people there was actually um, she wasn't a podcaster but she does a lot of audiobook recordings um, and she said drink lots of water to which in my mind I replied lubrication <laughs> because that's something that everybody else here at the Nexus TV have given me crap about because I drink so much water throughout the recordings of of shows I don't uh, understand how you don't pee more I have a l- a long I do, bladder. I don't have a large bladder, but I have a bladder that just doesn't care until it absolutely is about to burst, at which point it's suddenly like, get to the bathroom right now! That's a problem. And, I, well, yeah, it is. Actually, it has been a problem before because uh, when I was in junior high at Wolfridge, I got up onto the high ropes course 
and then realized that I absolutely needed to pee right away. And there was somebody in front of me who was going really slow, and I ended up peeing myself on the high ropes course. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Yeah. But I'm over it now enough now to just tell everybody about it. Um, yeah, you didn't tell me about that for quite a long time. <laughs> uh, th- this isn't the first that you heard of it, was it? No, the first I heard of it was like last month. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, drink lots of water. Lubricate your, your vocal cord things and uh, your throat. Because that's where the air goes through and it can't be chapped. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and don't do that with pop because pop makes you dehydrated. Correct. Um, but that you know we that, drink pop here though. We do, yeah. That's mostly <laughs> because Ryan is a great host and uh, hands us cans of pop every time that we come over. Yes. So, so maybe there is something to coming over to the studio to record and not doing it at home. You, you get know? free pop, yay! Um, and then of course they they were giving like a bunch of uh, recommendations for podcasts and things to go and check out. Um, so I'll, I'll probably I'll just stick that list in the in the show notes as well. Um, instead of going through them all. And I I haven't checked out every single one of them. In fact, at this point, I've only checked out one of them. Um, But yeah, Uh, there there were a few, uh, there were a couple of uh, panels that I really, really wanted to go to that I didn't get to. Um, One of them was, so how do you make your money um, as as a content creator? Um, Which is a, a topic that I've read up a lot on and and have given a lot of thought to. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that Hank Green didn't say anything there at the panel that I haven't heard him say on the topic before, because this is a topic that he's like written about mm-hmm. a bit. Um, and the, the gist of what he wrote before that I got was, um, just have at least a thousand fans <laughs> Good who, luck. who like true, true fans who will buy and, you know, gobble up ev- anything that you do. And uh, that should be enough to make enough money to live off of it. Hmm. Um, and then everything else is is extra. Um, and obviously, you know, relying on like ads on YouTube is not really going to be enough. So you know, you, t-shirts, man. Yeah, the store always. Um, also, I think Patreon was was another hmm. like po- one that he mentioned positively. Yeah, that's oh. that's a very new system. Mm-hmm. So I'd be cautious with that still. But you mean you mean like that that particular business or just the the idea of I'm just going to make things and if you want to give me money, thank you. That Patreon as a particular business. Okay. Um donating to support a thing has always been what people do. Mhm. It, it it's just that it used to have the face of PayPal instead of mm. Patreon. Which may have been bought by no wait no Patreon bought Subbable that's what happened oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean like the the Vlog Brothers use Patreon and they seem to know what they're talking about so yeah. I'm willing to to say it's probably a good idea yeah 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 once I set up my own website I'll I'll probably set up a Patreon or something like that yeah um. Right. Uh, and then, um, yeah, there were a few other panels that, that I went to mostly because of the people in them and didn't really absorb much of what was what was going on in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just kind of the excitement of, there's Cecil Baldwin. Ah! Ah! Yeah. Um, the, the, the first panel that I went to on Friday, on the first day, uh, was basically because Hank Green was, was, uh, moderating it. Um, and when he and the other featured guests, like, walked in the door and were kind of, you know, talking amongst each other, just kind of huddled over there, I was like, I gotta get a picture of Hank Green because I'm in the same room as Hank Green and he's not on a stage. And it's so, oh my God. <laughs> Even though I was like way, way high up because, you know, the, the stand, it, it wasn't, the seats weren't like on the, floor Mm -hmm. uh level with the with the um table where they were doing the panel it was like a auditorium style yeah um it it actually oh i need to describe this to you it was really really cool um so the the main uh the main stage events were in this big auditorium right Mm -hmm. um and at the back of the auditorium there are kind of three um sections of seats where the the seats go up, right? You know, mm-hmm. so it's not exactly a balcony, but by the time you get up 
to the the top of that, you might as well be in a balcony, right? Yeah. Um, all three of those, those rooms can rotate around. Why? And because if they're rotated around, then become they become their own isolated atriums. Oh. And so two of those were rotated uh, around um, for this weekend, and that's where two of the three panels took place. And then the the largest panel it, during any given time period was in the main atrium. Hmm. Um, and so then, so so yeah, they so they had those two, and like I went most of the convention not realizing that that was a thing, and then during one of the panels, somebody made a reference to, yeah, I wish that they gave me, had given me the keys to rotate the room around. Um, and I just kind of looked up and I'm like, the ceiling's circular. I looked down at the ground. There's a circular seam in the carpet. You know, looked at the kind of walls. The walls are all circular. What is this? <laughs> I realized that I was sitting on a, on a gigantic circle that could rotate. I was like, th- th- w- cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, I mean, whoever came up with that design should get a promotion. Oh, yeah. That was really cool. Um, um, yeah, there was, there was actually one that I really, really wanted to go to that I, that I didn't get to. Um, that was tropes, misinformation, and stereotypes. Mm. How to identify and avoid when writing outside of your experience. Um, because especially over the last few years, I've become hyper aware of the fact that, uh, Hey, my experience is not the only experience that there is in the world. And it's not an assumption I can make, (laughs) which I think it was an assumption that I kind of made for a really long time, especially throughout high school. Yeah. Um, God, what was wrong with me back then? I don't know. You were unaware. I was so unaware. You also claimed you were an alien. I was a, yeah, um... Hmm. <laughs> I think I was just very confused and inconsistent, um, but we were, it didn't bother me. We were all um, little weird. Well, yeah, yeah. It was high school. None of us had figured things out yet. You're I'm not, 23. You're not, you're not mature in your brain till you're like 25. Right. So. Yeah. Um. I. Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to have things all figured out. You know. Nah. It's it, life is a learning experience. Um. But yeah, that like. That one and, um, gosh, what was the other one? They, they were like two panels at the exact same time that both had just gigantic lines waiting for them. Um, and, you know, so I walked out of the, the main auditorium, um, and was like, okay, I gotta go to, let's see, atrium number two next to go to tropes and misinformation. Oh, oh, that's the line and it, go- oh, it goes all the way around. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna make it into that one. And I looked at the other atrium and I'm like, same thing on that end what is going on um so that was so that was when i kind of just wandered down to the vendor's room to go and see what was up there Mm -hmm. um by the way that was a really small vendor's room yeah it was yeah there were like i'm gonna estimate 10 to 12 different uh vendors Mm -hmm. there um not very many you know and and of course the by far the largest one was the DFTBA store. Well, yeah. Um, and and then like, it was really funny because the uh, the 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 ones that didn't get any business versus the ones that had like crowds around them. Um, you could definitely tell that there were a lot of writers at this convention. <laughs> um, because the ones that had to do with like, um. Uh, you know, but bring bring in uh, just bring in a book that you have, um, a- and then exchange it for one of ours. You know, that was like uh, hugely popular. Um, you, you know, another one that had like uh, you know, take like um, take one of these cards and write a thing on it. So they had like different characters, like er, er, characters, uh, different categories. Um, you know, so like write a book review, write a uh, a a, um, a story prompt, write you know whatever. Um, the you would write that down, and then that card would go into the filing cabinet, um, and then you would spin the wheel to see what category of thing you would get out of the filing cabinet, mm. and so then you would grab that and like you know for example if you got um, a a story prompt, then you had to start writing a story based on a story prompt that somebody else had left there earlier in the convention. Right there? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and, well, I think I think you probably got to bring the card home so that you can continue well, yeah. if you wanted. Yeah. Um, so those ones got, like, a lot of business. 
Um, there was, you know, a couple of like artworks ones and, and jewelry ones that seemed to have like a moderate amount. Um, but then there was, uh, there was this, um, puzzle room here in like Northern, uh, some suburb North of Minneapolis, I think, um, that like nobody stopped at. It was really weird. I think part of that might be because there only about half of the people there were from the Twin Cities. Um, but still, I like I almost walked past it because there was nobody there. And then I kind of like looked and I was like, wait a minute. This is an escape room set on a spaceship. I need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, so yeah, I bought a few tickets for that. Um, and apparently the scenario that they have going right now involves... Like there's uh there's some monster on the ship and you have to solve the puzzles to try to defeat this monster Mm -hmm. and or escape from it, I guess. Um so it's I mean, I hope that we're gonna get to basically play the movie Alien. Mm. Um is is what I'm hoping. Like it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yes. Um there of course were signings throughout the weekend. Um and that's where that's where a lot of the, you know, diehard fans were for for uh, a good portion of it. Um, and I only wanted to go to one, the Welcome to Night Vale uh, signing, because I had a poster that I got at their live show earlier uh, this year in the spring um, that I really wanted to get signed. Um, you know, I, I could have, like, tried to get into one of Hank Green's signings or something like that, but I don't have any Vlogbrothers paraphernalia yeah. to, to get signed. Um, and I, th- I don't know if this was a combination of factors or just, you know, it may have just been because almost everybody there was a fan of welcome to night Vale, Um, or it might've been because they had to shut down their, you know, one of the two signings for welcome to night Vale mm-hmm. that they were doing. Um, but I, I didn't get in on time. Aww. And so they, so I didn't get to get the thing signed. Um, cause they, they had like a rule that you could only start lining up, uh, at, an hour before the signing started maximum. Um, and it, that one was right after the main stage event. So I was like, well, if I want to go down there and line up right away when I can, I have to leave the main stage event a full half hour early. And they mm-hmm. were still doing interesting stuff at that point. Um, and so then it wasn't until like 45 minutes before the signing started that I decided to leave um, and and go and see if I could get in line. And it was full by that time. <sighs> So sad. So sad. Um, oh well. Uh, and then in the in the evenings, they had these really really cool um, events. Uh, like um, they had a, a a live game of Super Fight um, up on the stage. So Super Fight is a game where you are assigned um, some character who has both like good and bad traits, and you have to argue why your character would win a fight mm. against another character. Um, and uh and so it's it's more a test of your storytelling abilities than um and and like making up stuff on the spot than it is about what character you get you know yeah um and from that from that i didn't actually go and see that i i was downstairs at a different event um while that was going on but from that we we got the uh inside joke of the guacanati um which is the Illuminati controlled by guacamole or something. I'm kind of fuzzy on the details. Um, but the important thing is that um, by the end of the convention, everybody knew about it. And whenever it came up in conversation, everybody would just raise up their hands and make a triangle symbol with their fingers. Um, and it was really, really funny on the, on during the last event of, of Saturday night, um, when one of the, like, when, when the host uh, said something about a conspiracy and 75% of the people in the crowd just raised up their hands and did this triangle symbol um, and he didn't know anything about it. He was like, I'm really scared right now. What is going on? <laughs> um, and actually, when I was, when I was writing in uh, this, this um, document about the guacama- guacanati so that I wouldn't forget it... Um, Google Docs did not flag it as misspelled. Hmm. So I think that Google is in on the conspiracy. I think it's a real thing now, um, <laughs> which is uh, also kind of scary. Um, another another event that they had in the evenings was the Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen, uh, which was a 
um, a uh, an improv storytelling game. Um, so everybody who is who is up on stage for that were playing the parts of these uh, adventurers who would you know they're they're kind of past their prime now you know but they they have these uh, stories to tell about the crazy adventures that they went on um, and it's all a bunch of malarkey right mm-hmm. and so they're just making up what like somebody else comes up with a prompt for that person um, and uh, and then um, they have to come up with a story around it. And then at any time during their story, another person at the table can just bring in like, well, uh, you know, th- either flag some inconsistency in their story or bring like invent an inconsistency. Right. So like, um, you know, well, uh, you you were talking about how this is, you know, clearly a, a diamond mine, but uh, or no, this is clearly a gold mine. But I was under the impression that all gold mines are filled with human hair. You know, and then, and then that person has to incorporate it into their story. Um, and the way that they kind of kept track of who was doing best was, you know, whenever you introduce an inconsistency into a story, you had to kind of bet a coin. Um, and if they successfully incorporated it, then they get to keep the coins. But if, if, uh, if they didn't, then you get to take one of their coins kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really funny because, uh, um, everybody kind of picked on Joseph Fink during his uh his uh story so he ended up with a ton of coins mm-hmm. and then um the next person just you know joseph Fink just like threw all of his coins at them and asked them all sorts of crazy <laughs> questions you know because they were the last person who was going so he had mm-hmm. nothing else to do with all these coins right um it was really funny um and that that actually that resulted in i think the funniest moment of the entire um, weekend, uh, because, um, one of the people, actually, she was the first person to tell her story, um, and, and the prompt was something like, uh, tell me, tell me about the time that you saved Cleopatra while simultaneously discovering the, um, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, not Cleopatra, um, um, Catherine the Great, while simultaneously, uh, discovering the the uh, headwaters of the Nile River, and so she gets, just, she came up with this really weird and erotic story about like um, how she she was you know going on this voyage up the Nile to find its uh, its headwaters, and then um, found you know she, they they heard some like um, calls of distress, and so they stopped and and you know at this pyramid that was all. Um, glittering and bejeweled and everything, and they went into the into the uh, um, um, the pyramid and and found uh, Catherine and uh, this um, you know dog headed guy in a very uncompromising uh, situation. Or I mean, no, in, in, in a very compromising. Thank you. Um, and 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 it all it turned into like you know there was like this lubed scepter that was involved somehow, oh. and she had to you know to to release Catherine the Great from her from her um, shackles from her from the from her bindings. She had to you know take the lube and like lather it all over her body, and it's just like oh wow okay, <laughs> making uh, Hank Green very very uncomfortable. While he was sitting next <laughs> to her. <laughs> um, it was it was hilarious. Um. And, uh, and yeah, that, um, and <laughs> it ended with, um, you know, what the way that she brought ba- it back to the whole, uh, discovering the headwaters of the, um, Nile River. She said, yeah, and then we continued on our journey and eventually found the fountainhead. And just, you know, boom, like mic drop. <laughs> it's like, oh man. Um, yeah, it was, it was a really, really good time. I could not stop laughing. Um, and they also had a few um uh, a few community events which was really cool so they had like a, a just a storytelling circle where you could tell any story that you wanted to i think it had to be a true story um and they kind of had a theme of like um this this was my first whatever so mm-hmm. at any any firsts um you could tell about um and i wanted to tell about uh the first time that i really felt self sufficient which was when Ian and I went uh, canoeing this summer, um, but I didn't get called on, so I didn't Aww. get to tell that story. Oh well, um, I got to hear some pretty good, good stories. 
um, especially the one that ended in a bad dad pun. Um, and I know that he's a dad because he was telling us a story about his, uh, his baby that had like figured out how to take off his diaper and pooped all over the room and like oh. because his butt was itchy he was like rubbing you know his his poopy butt all over all of the toys and things and so he he ended up having to clean it up and everything and and the the closing line was and that was my first apocalypse <laughs> um they also had open mics both nights um i i managed to go to the open mic on the second night um and it was oh my gosh, really, really good. <laughs> um, they had some some poetry, um, some singing, um, some people read some excerpts from books that they had written. Um, and actually, luckily, those those books were, for the most part, um, available online, so I can just go and read them. Um, and and uh, um, yeah, so that, that was a fun time. Um, and then the whole convention wrapped up uh, at, with a performance of too much light makes the baby go blind by the new york neo-futurists and i wasn't sure what the heck to expect from that uh earlier in the in the convention um but as it turns out the new york neo-futurists are um basically most of the cast of welcome to night vale mm-hmm. are are from this one um theater troupe yeah um and uh like basically um joseph fink is the only person who you know is a regular like part of welcome to night vale who isn't also part of too much li- I'm, I'm of the new york neo-futurists mm-hmm. um but like he's good friends with all of them you know hangs out with them all the time and so so that so they they are a good part of the the cast um and so the too much light maybe the baby glow blind is their ongoing attempt to uh perform 30 plays in 60 minutes. Um, and so they have, they have these 30 plays and the crowd just like when one play is done, we, we all shout out a number for what we, you know, which play we want. Uh, we only have the titles in front of us. Yeah. Um, in the brochure, we yell out a title or a, a number and then they, they go and grab that and get it set up and do the play. And, you know, there are, most of them are very, very short. Um, um, and you know, they, they ran, the whole spectrum from like, you know, really funny, um, to really bizarre, to very emotionally powerful, to, um, you know, like, uh, um, like taking on social issues. Um, and like it, it was really, really good. Um, like the, the tweet that I saw that summarized this the best, um, was that performance was so good that it got everybody at the convention off of their phones for a full hour, <laughs> <laughs> which is basically undoable if you you, yeah. know, you think about it. Um, but oh man, it was it was amazing. Um, and and apparently they you know the the whole performance is constantly evolving because each week when they when they perform it, they have somebody in the audience like roll a die or something to determine which play is going to be dropped from from the whole thing and then they come up with a new play to replace that one for the Mm. next week um and so the their their phrase for it is if you've seen the show once you've only seen it once (laughs) um and and you know and and even if most of the plays are the same they do them in different orders in different weeks you know so it might you know it might feel very different based on which ones follow other ones especially since some of them actually have things that persist after that play um so like one of them was called uh the uh, like the cold wet war or something um where it was it was all a metaphor for the cold war Mm -hmm. um but it it involved um jeffrey craner um having a water balloon and they gave a water balloon to somebody in the audience and he was like asking them questions about like well you know if i do this does it make you feel more uncomfortable you know if i if if one of my uh allies stands behind you with a water balloon you know does that does that affect how you feel you know about the power balance and everything um and uh and then they both kept their water balloons for the rest of the evening you know <laughs> yeah so jeffrey craner is doing the rest of the plays with a water balloon in his hand 
Um, so if that had happened like really early on in the in the hour, um, it would have been a little weird ha- seeing him, you know, with this water balloon for like the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, but as it was during that night's performance, it was like the third to last act or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, man. I want to go to New York and see it again now. <laughs> Because it was really, really, really good. Oh, I yeah. almost forgot to mention, and I didn't write it down, so I'm really glad that I um, remembered this. Uh, during one of the main stage events, um, which was being um, the the master of ceremonies or whatever, um, was uh, Kevin R. Free and, oh, shoot, was it Desiree? Um, you know, a couple of actors from, from Welcome to Night Vale. Um, Kevin R. Free decided to do some shout outs of people's names that he just, you know, saw on the website for yeah. NerdCon stories. And my name was one of them. Um, and and he even threw in like after saying my name and I was like, woo, you know, um, he was like, happy graduation, Ian Buck. And because uh, that's my profile picture mm-hmm. um, that he could see. Um, and I I so wanted to yell like, it's my birthday, too. But, you know. It, he wouldn't have been able to hear that really um yeah oh man that made me feel so special <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we as as stupid as it sounds like that one moment just stuck with me for the rest of the day and i kept going like kevin our and i are best buddies now like right yeah no <laughs> he's gonna forget about me real quick cool. oh. um i mean he did tweet at me again when i when i tweeted like oh my god you just called me out on stage and he was like yeah happy graduation said yeah. said the exact same thing again in a tweet huh yeah. oh well um yeah that was that was nerd con stories um i got to meet a bunch of people um like it's actually a really really large portion of the people were from the twin cities um and i think part of that is because it's the first year mm-hmm. um so it, you know it hasn't gotten like a huge national following um, but also, in the Twin Cities, we don't get very many national conventions. Yeah. So it's really exciting for people around here to be able to go to something without having to travel to the West Coast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I also noticed that there were a lot of teachers there. <laughs> um, And, like, I, I had noticed it independently just by talking to people and going, like, oh, yeah, what do you do? You know, I, you know, I, I teach computer tech. And, you know, oh, yeah, I'm the librarian at a, at a junior high or whatever, you know. And, like, um, mo- a lot of the people who I interacted with seemed to be in education in some form or other. And that was reinforced when um, Hank Green was up on stage and he said something about education and a bunch of people cheered. And he was like, yeah, how many people here are in education? And, like... A bunch of people, you know, like raised their hands and and cheered wildly. And I was like, oh, hey, yeah, like I'm with my people here. Awesome. It was good. It was really good. So good. Actually, the librarian from Harding High School was there as well. I spotted her and then I talked to her about it today during lunch. Um, And she was like, oh, yeah, I didn't see you there. And I was like, yeah, well, how did you feel about it? You know, (laughs) it was really cool. It's really cool. So cool. I did, it almost was ruined, though. Yeah. Because I almost got my camera stolen by some guy who just, you know, wandered into the convention center from Minneapolis. Mm. And, uh, um, yeah. So I kept my camera in my backpack after that <laughs> so that it wasn't just sitting on the table next to me. Um, Good plan. That would have been, that would have really sucked because that's a new camera. Mm-hmm. And my most... Like my most recent exciting purchase was that camera, yeah. Um, um. So yeah, but luckily, luckily that uh, didn't pan out terribly. Um, he just got, you know, chased away by security. Oh well. Good. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you wanted to ask about it, or? You're adorable when you're excited. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's. It's easy to get excited about things like this. Yes. You know, it's designed it's designed to um kind of manifest uh excitement in in the people who go to it, which is why we go to them, right? You so know. So when's the story based podcast coming out? 
Uh, you know, it depends on when we start uh, doing either a D&D campaign or playing Star Citizen. Which means that Star Citizen has to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got some ideas we can do in the meantime. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because, I mean, the <laughs> as silly as it sounds, I've never really written anything <laughs> in my life. <laughs> In I've terms written of fictional. a lot of things. It's just been bad. Yeah. 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 Um, I was thinking about like in in terms of practicing for the the sound design and and producing and everything. Um, is just take some of the crazy dreams that I've written down and making those into mm-hmm. um into an episode. Um, so that could be. That, that could yeah. be very good practice because then it takes the entire burden of write a good story out of the equation. Your brain already did it. My brain already did it and my brain is crazy. So it's going to be a crazy story. Yes. Yeah. Um, so look forward to that in the future. And uh, and yeah, I mean, think about think about uh, maybe going to NerdCon stories next year, wherever it happens, because uh, it was a really, really good time. Um, I, I do hope that they have kind of more of a variety of, uh, featured guests next time, actually, Mm -hmm. because it seemed like, um, you know, that basically everybody who was there in terms of the attendees were there either because Vlog Brothers or because Welcome to Night Vale. Yeah. Um, you know, even, even like Paul and Storm, who are like really, really big in a certain group, you know, a certain demographic, um, you know that yeah they it didn't seem like there were as many people there who were already big fans of theirs mm-hmm. um so i i hope that they can get um yeah more of a, a variety of people um but at the same time you know it was nice to have um a lot of featured guests who like i wasn't familiar with at the beginning but by the end when i had seen a couple of panels of theirs and stuff i was like okay i got to take note of this person and go and look up more of their things um and yeah, I left with like a lot of stuff that I'm now going like, well, got to catch up on all of those. I'm going to destroy my life by trying to consume too much media. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Very um, easy. I feel like there was something else that I wanted to say that I was thinking about like 30 seconds ago and now I can't remember it. Such is life. That's why I wrote all of this down. <laughs> um, oh, well. Uh, so thanks for listening in, everybody. Um, all like three of you, you know, cause we have a tiny following. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of following. Turns out going to a convention and tweeting about it the whole time is a really good way to get more Twitter followers Yay. because now I have hit, you know, I've, I've hit like over 50 Twitter followers now, which doesn't sound very impressive, but I've only had my account for since like April. Um, and, uh, and yeah, like uh, about 10% of my followers were boom over that weekend. Um, just met people, we followed each other on Twitter, or I said something supposedly witty about something that happened at the convention and other people who were just watching the hashtag retweeted my thing. And then, you know, a few people like followed me because of that, Mm. um, got way more of those than, uh, you know, people from the democratic presidential debate last night, which I was live tweeting. Yeah. Networking. Which I'm, yeah, I'm okay with because I, I want those kinds of people to be listening to my Twitter feed. The kinds of people who went to NerdCon Stories. Yeah. They are my people. I must go. They need me. Um, so, Savannah, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on Google+, Plus, or you can go to twitter.com slash eternally Um, you know, I'm gonna go with that's a lie. What? You can Google+, Plus. you don't do anything on there. I mean, you can find I, me there. Oh, you can, but you don't you're not active. Yeah, what do you want me to say? Give me, I'm, give you my Tumblr? What? Nah, I, nah whatever. Nobody I, wants that. Um, so yeah, I'm also um, quite active on the Twitter, and um, and I do actually post a lot of stuff on Google Plus. But both of those, I guess, I, I usually just double post. So yeah. whichever whichever one you prefer. Twitter. Um, and uh, I've actually been trying to kind of bring my YouTube channel up and actually be a regular YouTube channel. You know, like making things on a regular basis um well i mean uh currently the easiest way to do that is to just play towerfall and live stream it (laughs) and then that gets archived we haven't played towerfall in a few weeks it's been a while yeah um but that's the easiest way to do it all right let's go play towerfall okay cool um have a good week (laughs) how have a good life have a good (laughs) life
<laughs> it's been so long since I've podcasted on a regular basis, I forget how we end these things. Bye.